Hi everyone, uh, welcome to probably the last uh, session of the year. Um, what a lovely day today, 12 degrees, uh, probably about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Uh, sun's out, it's absolutely gorgeous. Just waiting for the tide to come in, so I'm uh, going to wait for it to get a couple of inches deep and then I'll start walking. Um, basically what I'm going to try and do on this uh, session, the last of the year, is uh, I'm going to be sort of trying to tell you what I've learned in the last six months. I started winging in June, uh, end of December now, so uh, it's been a pretty good learning curve. Um, an amazing sport, really, really enjoying it and uh, can't wait till next year and what's going to happen. But uh, for the moment, um, I've just basically been trying to master the, the actual getting up with light winds, trying to get going in stronger winds, controlling the board and some of the ideas I've come up with. So what I'll do is I'll take you through some of the things I've done this year, um, some of the thoughts of um, what can possibly help you, some of the things that seem to be market led that, that I think will take you down the wrong way and probably hinder you, um, but, but we'll go from there. So uh, what I'm also going to do is I've got my uh, I've got my speed watch on today, so I'm going to try and see how fast I can go. Um, I've got a six meter echo, I'm going to flatten it right off, it's a bit breezy today so it's probably ideal for it actually. I've come out on my Nash um, and you'll probably notice from uh, the past uh, with my Nash is that I've now got foot straps on it in uh, the front position. So this is where my foot straps are for if the wind foiling and this is the foot straps that I've put on. So um, you'll see on some of the clips when I've not had foot straps on, basically worked out where my feet went and uh, I've now put some plugs in. Uh, put a back strap on. I'm going to work with that today, but I'm not overly impressed with the back strap on any of the boards I've used. Um, it feels nice, uh, you do feel quite locked in, but it makes it very hard to jibe because um, you just seem to not get your foot out. But also, um, you find that you need to move your foot around quite a lot when you're pumping, when you're, you know, if you're in different wind conditions and stuff like that. So, I've got a very wide foot strap so I can move my foot around if I need to, but basically, it's uh, going to be a case of um, I might take it off later on and, and just see what I'm happy. The other thing I've done today is I've come out on my slightly smaller foil. Um, I've got my uh, Slingshot 84, um, which is slightly smaller, so I should see an increase in speed as well. I was out on it yesterday and uh, with a five, and it felt the fastest I've been. I mean, it's not it's not windsurfing speed, but certainly for foiling. Um, in, in like sort of reasonable winds it, it's pretty good probably up in the 18 to 19 miles an hour mark um, but cruising around probably 15 to 16 so uh, yeah so once I get a little bit more water then I'm gonna start walking out there's a little bit out there now um, it's not gonna make a massive difference but uh, this place is awesome for flat water you can see just it's the bottom is the same depth everywhere every now and again which is nice because it got a big yellow boy it says stay away from the rocks but uh, apart from that hopefully we'll get a bit of head cam stuff we'll get a bit of um, trying to get some shots of the foil whilst we're up and going in the water um, and as you can see this is my Nash um, 142 that's now being pretty much turned into a winging board okay so one of the things I have been doing this year uh, towards the end of the year is I've gone to using a harness uh, coming from windsurfing, foiling, uh, wind foiling, it's, it's, uh, it's not really that hard a progression. Um, and to be quite honest, I think if, you, if you've learned how to wing foil without any of the other wind sports, it probably isn't going to be a problem. The most important thing about the harness is actually setting your line up. And you want to basically set it up so that it's in the middle of where your hands would normally be when you're powered up. So when you've got a bit of wind, um, like today, you can see that my hands are sort of in this position this is probably where I'd be sailing so the idea is if I put my hand roughly in the middle I should be able to hold the wing not far away from where it is probably a little bit further back needed but when you get powered up this bends and your center of pressure actually moves back so it ends up probably being a little bit further back anyway um, and I like to sail a little bit more backhanded so a little bit of pressure in so the idea being is that when you're in harness you can actually let go with one hand quite easily um, no problem, and you could uh, probably end up looking after uh, for two hands if you get it balanced nicely. So it's actually just a case of setting it up, have a reasonably long line, and then basically what you want to be doing, this is my sort of sailing position, because you don't want to be so so long that you can't actually, when you hook in, you can't relax your arms, but also you want to be to the point where you're not so close that you can't get the boom away from you. 
So that's how I set them up like that. You probably do with this coming back just a tiny little bit more. But it's a case of personal preference really. Once you get to the point where you find actually that's not far off, it just means you can relax your arms. So I'll be going from doing 20 to 30 minute sessions to two hours now. Uh, it works really well. So here we are, very, very windy. Way too much for a six, really. So it's flattened it right off. But it's good. We're out. It's not cold. Happy days. Right, so we're on the 84, so it's a little bit more sort of responsive than the 99. And it's a little bit faster as well. Not particularly quick at the moment, just finding my bearings. But yes, yeah, so you can see you've got my feet in both straps. Front strap, excellent. Just get your feet straight in, you're in the right position. Back strap, again, straight in the right position. The only problem with the back strap I found is that when I want to jive, I find it really hard to get my foot out. And then if I do take it out before I jive, I've got nowhere to put it because it's right where the strap's right where I want my foot to be. So uh, I may end up just taking that off. But let's try for a jive. Let's try the. Uh, the old fashioned way, take your foot out the strap first of all. Oh, just as the wind drops, typical. Also shows just how vital your foot positioning is, because my foot's now slightly further forward than it was before, and it's hard to keep it on the foil. So here we go, a little bit of speed. Let's go round. Because my foot's not flat on the board, it's sort of straddling the strap find it hard to control my foot. Right, anyway, we're round. That's, uh, that's the first kill of the day. So, now the feet are in, the straps are in the right position, I can basically go straight into the foot straps and pump. And because I've got the front foot strap, I can sort of lift with my front foot, which means I can pump better. I'm on my very short mast, so I am going to touch down because there is a bit of chop here. But as I said before, with the uh, harness line, there's no pressure in my arms at all now. If anything, I'm just a little bit of backhand, just sheeting in. But there's no effort at all. Even when the wind comes in, it's not a problem. However, if I want to get a little bit more control, and then I've got the ability to bend my legs a bit more and I've just got a little bit more scope. Right, let's uh, use the wind. Let's try for a jump. on your board it could be a little bit more worse with the uh, with the harness hook if you want to sort of try and roll on on your side and try and get onto your all fours fairly quickly to protect your board if you find yourself laying down like that then get onto your elbows and protect your board so here we go a little bit of chop today so it's a bit tippy 
wing above your head as quick as you can. That gives you that stability. A little bit of forward board speed. That helps you get, uh, gain a little bit more stability. Then move yourself so that your back leg is 90 degrees to the board. Front leg 45 or front foot straight up. Once you're happy, stand up. Now what I want to talk about now is foot positioning. I've got my foot quite far forward on the board. So I'm pumping. You can see the board's accelerating, but it's not lifting. If I move myself back, board now lifts. Conversely, if I'm too far back, nose wants to rise. I'm now trying to hold the nose down with my back foot, with my front foot, apologies. So you can see now, if I move myself forward, board's going, doesn't want to lift. Move myself back, board lifts all on its own. Now you can see the nose is still touching the water. So what I'm gonna do is bring my foot back a little bit further, probably about an inch. And you can see now that's moved it out a lot better. Tiny mast on today, so I am gonna to touch down in this chop. But it's just a case then of trying to find where the right position is. It gives you a nice smooth ride. You can see the chop here today is probably a good foot and a half, two foot, so I've only got 45 centimeter mast on, so I am bound to touch down. So a little bit of wind here, but I want to go upwind. And going upwind is when you really have to sheet in with your back hand. And that's, uh, that's when the harness really starts to work. Because you can just relax and rest your back hand. The problem with it is, is you lose, you lose the stability, or not the stability, you lose the, uh, the dexterity. So when I've got it here, you can see I can bend my legs, bend my knees, bend my waist. Oh. And if I do this, 